cursed a little bit of heaven fell from out the sky one day and it settled in a spot not so very far away and when old Isaac saw it sure he rubbed his hands with glee and he said we build a shipyard there and call it John I.T. Then he filled it up with workshops and apprentice engineers who agreed to serve their time there for five long weary years. And when it all was over and they went away to sea, sure they cursed the day. They started work at Messrs. John I. T. Down Victoria Road, I run, no, but don't be late. And don't forget to show my pass at the main Wollstone Gate. Alarm clock rings, I slowly awake. I've been left Wollstone for years, for God's sake. But while I'm dreaming and going down memory lane, let us remember the company that is our loss and Pompey's gain. We had been there for gone 100 years before the bulldozers came and brought us to tears. Thornicoss were a, was a company that would build any ship that someone wanted, no matter what. Uh, when we were taken over by Vosper, they concentrated on warships, nothing else. But Thornicoff, we built stern wheelers. That was for summary on the African River, you know, with the paddle boats in the stern and um, some per, uh, light little gunboats for Peru, a floating dock for Peru, as well as the Royal Navy frigates we were building and uh, our destroyers and those torpedo boat destroyers. When you first started, you were given a little piece of paper and told to go up the stores, you'll laugh at this, and ask for a long wait. So you were there and you just said, oh stand over there son. You stood over there, and five minutes went by, ten minutes went by, and probably after about a quarter of an hour, he would say, all right, you can go back now. And that was for a long wait. Mm. Sort of a, an initiation really. You know, it, it's essentially its own little world. It's heavy industry. It's quite sort of, you know, sort of masculine. I remember it being essentially sort of a, a male sort of world. Uh, there was a lot of humour, a lot of jokes, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I think there was a, a degree of camaraderie there as well, and, you know, and sort of group identity. But it's also, you know, it's very hierarchical, um, and the, the divisions between trades. The electricians thought they were better than every, any, anyone else. Um, and there's this, you know, divisions between labourers and semi-skilled and tradesmen. There were definitely t tensions. Every sort of trade had their own sort of distinct sort of identity and group identity, I think, yeah. And often you didn't really have much to do with uh, other trades, you know, if you, particularly if you're an electrician, you know. A lot of your work was done when the boat was uh, almost finished, you know. Later on, uh, because it seemed as though the steel side was finishing, I went over to GRP, which is glass for reinforced plastic. And what they used to do, they had a machine that you had to roll the cloth down on this great big flat bed panel, and you had to actually roll the resin on with a great big roller, like you would roll the ceiling, and you had to roll the resin down and then lay the cloth on top, and then another layer of cloth, another layer of resin and eventually the whole hull of the ship would be rolled out inside the mould. I can certainly remember perhaps before the use of glass reinforced plastic that you would hear riveting going on with phosphorus. So it was you know, the sound of heavy metal fabrication in the machine shops. So it was quite a noisy yard. Uh, at times, certainly a good mile away 
and you could hear the activity of the shipyard. And it was a very, very busy yard. Um, and obviously there'd be cranes and machine shops. Um, so there was just a general hubbub around the shipyard. You know, you knew it was a working shipyard. Um, so now, of course, you, you have silence in Wolfston as a result of that. We had a lot of asbestos. All the engine room on the boats, the points were so red hot, they were all lagged with asbestos. And you could see when you went down there, the sun was shining, you could see all the flakes of dust, like sheets, like a white sheet. It was shocking. You had no precautions, no, no mask or anything, of, of the, just ordinary, you just go in there and work. And those men used to come home, absolutely covered it in white, white dust. But at the present moment, we have a lot of suffering from asbestosis, a lot. There was a big cultural change in the office during the sort of mid 80s because we then got computers in the DA. So it went from being hand-drawing drawings, drawings done by hand and inkwork and we were all going to be trained on computer vision, CAD drawing, um, computer aided design. When the computers come in, you felt more of a, like a battery hen. It was, it was a quieter environment. Everyone was concentrated on the screen. When you worked on the drawing board, there was a lot more, um, someone would be whistling in the background, someone would be singing, someone would be telling a joke. Launch day was a great day because that was the culmination. The, 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 that's the time the product became a ship and the spirit was with the ship. It was wonderful, very evocative. There's always risk, there's always danger, there's always thrill. Uh, and of course it's the day that the workforce bring their families in to see the product, to see their workplace. But above all, to see this great product that they've had a hand in going into a natural element for the first time. Wonderful. The band will march in, the visiting dignitaries, there will be gold braid everywhere, the, the directors will be around, and their wives and their hats will be around. But an hour before that happens and they actually come onto the launch platform, the shipwrights will have been heard with their massive hammers, the mauls, knocking out the supports, the timber supports, that then transfer the load from all the forest of timbers that are propping the boat up down onto the sliding ways. The ways have been greased, a good high tide is there. Then you hear the, the whistle of the foreman ship on it, say, all's clear, all's safe. The load has gone on to not just the sliding ways, but, but the actual trigger mechanisms are now taking the load of the ship. And so you've got this hubbub of excited people Flags were everywhere, the place has been tidied up, and nobody can fail to be sort of in, enthralled and enthused by the excitement of the day. It's a tremendous occasion. And so there we are, on the launch platform, everything's ready to go. The ceremony takes place, then the lever is pulled, and the first thing you hear are the triggers dropping, very heavy chunks of metal go clunk down. Down with that comes the crash of the, of the, of the bracket that holds the champagne. The champagne hits the bow, breaks, splashes everywhere, and then nothing happens. And then ever so gradually, the weight is beginning to move, and as the movement generates heat, the heat melts the wax, the wax eases the, the grease, the thing starts to go, and then she's on her way. And she starts to hit the water. She's afloat, she's there in a natural element, and the moment she hits the water, every ship in Southampton blasts, welcome to the water of another sister. It's a tremendous emotional feeling. For somebody that's been involved in the building of a ship, there's a lot of pride when the ship goes down the slipway, and not only goes down the slip slipway, but stays afloat at the sea. <laughs> and uh, all that being aside, it's... Uh, a lot of pride goes into the, the job, 
there's something about a ship that is in you, you know, it's it's hard to describe, but you feel part of it is going with you when the ship gets launched and when it gets accepted and goes away, you know, you think, well, that's a job well done. Uh, pride, pride, that's what it is. As nostalgia went through my phosphor blue vein, I'm glad they left the fitting out complex and the quayside crane. No more welding, riveting, rigging or hauls to countersink. We were all down the river with no time to think. With memories and photos to last and last, we can recapture the days of phosphor's past. When VT left Warson, I think it was quite sad for Warson. I, I couldn't see Warson continue on with the same sort of community. I thought, well, the shop's going to die, pubs are going to close down, which I probably, probably already have. You know, you thought, well, it's a death of community. It's a place where I was born, and it's quite sad, really. And uh, I still feel sad when I see all the, the buildings have been flattened, and you know, because there's memories there for me. You know, and I think oh, I was, I had some real happy years there. <laughs>